Hello and welcome to the day two vlog here from Cedar Point. What a successful day I had here yesterday. So much so I didn't really cover everything that I did because I was too busy running around enjoying all the attractions and the haunts. So today I'm going to try to recap a lot of that experience. So definitely check out that vlog from last night to capture the atmosphere. But for today we're definitely going to just check out some of the highlight rides. We're going to also check out the construction going on in the park because there's a lot. Very exciting times for the next couple of seasons. And then also recap some of my favorite rides here as well. It's early in the park day. In fact, we are here for the exclusive time to start at 10 a.m. before the park opens at 11 for the rest of the guests. Because I'm a platinum season pass holder, that means we go straight inside. Day two, Cedar Point, Halloween weekends. place like no other. Before we begin our day, we invite you to turn toward the American flag at our main entrance as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day at Cedar Point, America's rock and roller coast. Ride on. So the park is just opening up for its early ride times. There's three main coasters as part of that arsenal. There's Gatekeeper, there's Raptor, I believe actually Val Raven is part of it, and finally Millennium Force. We're not going to mess around, we're going to go on all four of those rides, get them done early. Potentially in this vlog, I might also do every roller coaster and give you my thorough review of each. There's a lot to cover here in today's vlog, so let's get started. It takes so long to get from one ride to the other, especially when the park is completely empty. So I'm going to do Val Raven first. And then I'm gonna backtrack over to Millennium. It's all the way in the back, but it's really just in the center of the park, but boy, does it take long to get there. And then I gotta backtrack all the way to Gatekeeper and then back up again. So this is a bit complicated. Just finished a ride on Val Raven behind me. A middle right seat, but the ride is a walk on and it will probably be a walk on for the most part of the day. So, great ride. Less janky than last night, oddly enough. Maybe it's the spot that I was sitting in. Uh, but you know, everyone that has been on it knows what it offers. It's a great dive coaster, formerly the tallest in the world. Uh, great layout, tons of great inversions. My favorite of which has to be this slow inversion here. The last one just before this turnaround is fantastic as you hang in your seat before you head down. Slight 
adjustment to our plans here. Also, the Cedar Point music, if you notice in the background, it's not pop music, which is very refreshing compared to my home, Cedar Fair Park, which plays nothing but Ariana Grande and other pop stars that I cannot actually stand. I'm sorry, fans, Taylor Swift fans. My poor suffering partner loves her, but I cannot stand Taylor Swift. I'm sorry. Um, so it's great to be at a park where I don't have to listen to her today. Not my partner, but Taylor Swift. Beyond the point, and speaking of humor, uh, Cedar Point ride ops really are the best. I like that just all throughout the time that I've been here, the enthusiasm, the originality to every dispatch, the over uh, the narration, it's not recorded. It is on some rides like Val Raven, but uh, yeah, they're just the best. And they really kind of mock you when you're not enthusiastic enough after a ride. It's pretty much happened every single train that I've had dispatched throughout the park. It's just been awesome to experience that enthusiasm. So as I said, we are changing direction here and heading back to the front of the park because the majority of people are heading towards, I believe, Steel Vengeance as it's not open yet, nor is Millennium. So instead of spending our time going back there, we're going to co cover a couple credits in the front here and then work our way back up that side. That being said, I did get four rides on Steel Vengeance last night, so if you want to hear me just go off on it, uh, that's definitely last night's vlog. We're going to try to end tonight's vlog with that ride in particular. Now, one thing from last night that I didn't get quite to cover is the haunting of Erie Estate which is the best haunt and the brand new haunt here at Cedar Point from last night. This is where you enter. It's in an uh, administrative building, but what looks like an old house. It is only on the main floor. And what you're dealing with is sort of like a turn of the century sort of parlor that has been taken over by a spiritual possession of which you unleash at the beginning room uh, through uh, a Ouija board. It really is a uh, fantastic haunt and I'd say the best one here without question. Uh, it is new, lots of tight corridors tons of scare actors within it and uh, the theming as well I really enjoyed this shower scene I don't want to spoil anything but uh, yeah that was definitely a really cool effect um, very effective it was just very claustrophobic and full of cobwe cobwebs and eerie speaking of eerie this entire lagoon is full of green water which I've never really seen that before Fortunately, there's no kids here because the kids should be in school. Some are not, however. You can actually walk through the ooze. There's a bright lime green, yo. Today it should be mentioned that there's not a full ride offering, but a decent one I would say. Every major ride, as far as coasters are concerned, are open, except for say, if you would count it, Gemini. Uh, I'm hoping that might not be the case today, but we'll see, but it was definitely the case for Halloween Haunt. Gatekeeper is a hard coaster to get in, in the sense that because it's so far from everything else in the park, you kind of really have to time manage. I'm only in the park for three and a half hours today. So this will probably be my last ride on it for the season. It's like kind of covered in last night's vlog. I'm not too big of a fan of the ride or just wing coasters in general.
got another change of plans as for some reason Gatekeeper is now closed as is Raptor even though they were running trains earlier. We're getting closer to official park open so I think that they're doing some final tests before those rides go through. So we're on Blue Streak. We're gonna get our second ride in of our visit. This time a day ride, hopefully in the front. Just finished a ride on Boo Streak behind me. Boo Streak. Uh, I think the only reason why it's called Boo Streak is because they put up these temporary uh, ghost placards, if you will. Decent ride. Uh, definitely better in the front seat than, say, the back last night. Although it wasn't too janky for the age of this ride. Great air time at the first half. Uh, really kind of levels out in those low profile airtime hills in the second half, but it's a classic. It's a great ride to get kids on, running pretty well considering its age. Blue Street, great little ride. Probably not in the top of the rankings, but you gotta get it once while you're here. We're gonna take a moment to cover what most of you probably are most curious about for the visit at the park this time of year. And that is the condition of Top Thrill Dragster. I will say though that from this vantage point, from the perspective of Iron Dragon, you get a great sight line of what's going on with Top Thrill in the background down here. So we're going to cover a little bit of that right now. I just got off Iron Dragon recently, as you know. So if you are in the park and you want to get a good idea of what's going on with the ride, I suggest getting down here. Most of the rides are testing now. Power tower is going on both sides. It's looking good for a full day of roller coasters, even though I'm here only half a day. suspended coasters and Iron Dragon ranks highly among them although hmm, it's not even in my top three suspended coasters oddly enough probably my fourth well one thing that was definitely in my top coasters of all time and unfortunately is not open right now as we were approaching as I said it's top thrill dragster now the whole area has been cordoned off here as you're gonna notice up behind a complete devoid of its former self wall fixture but you know we can get a, a little bit of height in this camera so let's see what we can get we can't get any development it's too high it's too bad I'm not six feet tall now if you go on to Iron Dragon you can actually see that they've removed most of the track sections for the return to the station and the turnaround on this side are all completely missing now. As is the hydraulic lift system or the hydraulic launch system has been removed from the launch track as we're about to find out on this side. They certainly made this wall the right height so you can't see anything though. They know what they're doing here at Cedar Point. You can see a large crane has already been brought in on site. But what remains a complete mystery still Gorkscrew sadly will not operate today. I will admit, I don't think I've been on Gorkscrew more than a couple of times. But it is a classic. One of the two classic arrows that we have in this park. We might be able to get a better vantage point of what's going on here. Other than this cart is not really our concern. Maybe that's the new attraction. It's more this what this gentleman is doing over here. As 
you can see there's definitely some removal of technical equipment happening on the spot. You can see most of the launch track has been removed for the launch mechanism itself. Something big is happening with this ride. Figured I'd show you this elaborate pumpkin setup. So one of the scare zones I was not able to cover last night, unfortunately, is I went through it, but I did not cover it on video. And I watched a lot of videos speculating on the future of this ride, um, so I'm piecing together pieces of what they've said. Hello, El Toro, Ryan. Um, and also a great little speculation by Screamscape as well. Because there's a large crane over there that can get some significant height to it, it makes me think that maybe the idea of a spike on the station side is actually uh, coming to reality and that they're going to go for the height record with this ride. There's really no evidence yet on the tower of that change coming. But I'm pretty sure that if that's the case, and that's what Cedar Point has up their belt, they're going to wait until the park actually closes before they do any work on this particular structure. So that way they can continue teasing people about what's to come. We're at one of my favorite rides of all time, so we're going to go on. Magnum XL 200. And no cell phones, guys. Well, if you want a cell phone on that lift, we're going to have to send four of you in the up that lift for a guy. Hey, I'm going to go right in front of that lift. I'm going to go right in front of that lift. Just finished up a close to back seat ride, or at least the third from back ride here on Magnum XL 200. I have a lot of rides to do today, so I'm not sure that I'll do another because my head might not be able to take it over the course of the day. Still a fantastic ride. Whew. Uh, I do have a little bit of an aside. The uh, last night's ride on it in the same position had a couple of enthusiasts behind me. I'm just going to be honest. We tend to, at least when we're together, be a bit whiny um, as they were complaining, or at least the one guy was complaining about trim brakes being applied before the pretzel turnaround. You kind of have to apply them because that ride is running very fast, and I don't know if I'd really want it without the trims because it would be super janky if that were the case. Being sucked out of that pretzel loop or pretzel turnaround into the uh, or bow tie, whatever you want to call it, leading back to the station. Still the best part of the ride. Just unrelenting. So many ejector moments. Just a fantastic ride and really legendary. And I do not want to think of the day that it's not with us. We're now going to make our way to the next section of the park, past the kids' area. The 
as we look to get on some heavy hitters from last night, including Steel Vengeance, which is now up and running in the background. As mentioned before, Gemini is unfortunately not open today. And we'll make sure to prioritize getting on both sides of Gemini next time I'm here. It is still one of my favorite aerodynamics coasters. It's completely unrelated, but for those that have made comments about my Marineland vlogs being such an empty and depressing park, well, this is Cedar Point. It's pretty empty. Some landmark news came down from that park just a couple days ago, which will come in our new update for September after this journey. But for now, it's time to get on the big boys. It's time to ride them high. Okay, so I need to put the camera away for the next two attractions because you gotta put the camera away. They don't allow them on these attractions, which is going to be Steel Vengeance and Maverick. Maverick actually hasn't opened yet, but I was gonna go on that first because it has a lower throughput than, say, Steel Vengeance. But it does look like it's about to start up, so we're gonna get in this line. We're gonna get on Maverick, Steel Vengeance. I'll give you my reviews after I've done my rides. For a review of Steel Vengeance and this of it, I definitely recommend you watch yesterday's vlog as I covered as about as much sexy shots of this ride as I could possibly get. So for the end of this vlog today, because it's the end of our day here, I still have three things to ride, but uh, I've spent the most part of th uh, this early afternoon just getting all these rides in because Steel Vengeance is a walk-on, so highly regard or highly recommend for those of you that are desperate to get on that ride, or at least multiple rides in the day, you kind of want to come to this event because that's when you're going to get that. Two consecutive rides, it's one a little after one o'clock in the afternoon, and I've done almost everything in the park, at least that's available, which is remarkable. Including Maverick, which was actually the longest wait today. It was about a uh, 20 minute wait for Maverick and I got into the line just as the ride opened for the day so the timing was perfect. I also feel like I should address Cutthroat Cove which I ran through last night at the end of my vlog as it was uh, very close to closing time, as you can see the hours there. This year's Sundays are not offered as part of the ride offerings, which is kind of unusual. You do get a great perspective of Maverick from this spot too. It was actually a very good haunt or a walk through scare zone. These are remnants of the uh, COVID age, but uh, very well built out and long too. It took forever to get through that particular maze to the point that I was really worried that I wasn't gonna get through uh, all of them last night, but I did. Uh, so yeah, it was a very uh, unique experience and great in the sense that you could just get through everything very fast. I have to worry about those lines at Cedar Point, which is almost never a thing. So we're just gonna get a little bit of this Maverick of Maverick. A minute wait. Wow, crazy! And it's better than Steel Vengeance. How? How? It is on a 30-minute wait. It is weird.
I didn't cover dining on this vlog, but I will say that the dining facilities at Cedar Point, even during this haunt, which is about half of what they normally offer, it's been pretty scrumptious looking, and I made the big mistake of only having fries last night. Uh, so on the next trip to this park, I think we're going to definitely spend a lot more time focusing on the haunt stuff specifically, in addition to taking in some of the lo more luxury type experiences. Cedar Creek Mine Ride. Too long of a line. It's not worth it considering that I have only a couple minutes left in the park. I kind of wish I had done it at night now. Uh, I definitely did it last time I was here uh, for Halloween weekends. Mistakes have been made. We're off. I should probably give a review of Maverick uh, as I got my second ride straight on into the back of the train, which is fantastic. Ooh, it's such a great ride. It's hard for me to really rate it compared to Terran, which is pretty much the closest ride I've been on to Maverick. I wouldn't classify it as the same sort of experience as, say, Pantheon, which is pretty much my favorite launch coaster. And yes, I've been on Blossom Coaster. So just finished a fantastic ride on Maverick. Not my favorite intimate launch coaster, but definitely up there. Uh, over 15 years, it's definitely aged somewhat, and the thrills that it offers get a little bit more jankier, um, but still a tremendous ride, and hugely popular in this park still, as it's the longest wait, uh, second only to Millennium Force, and Steel Vengeance in third. Kind of unusual. Anyhow, we gotta get out of the park, because we're off to another Cedar Fair Park for its haunt event tonight. So as we do, we're gonna wander through the rest of Frontier Trail here, and then I'll see you on the other side of the park. The thing I should cover is that Blood on the Bayou, which I did last night, if you do come to this event and you're short on time, I would avoid it. Woo, it took a long time to get through, and it wasn't that great. Sort of a uh, spin on that typical trope of haunts, which is, you know, sort of mountain village type of thing, where everybody's, you know, a bit possessed, but really more cannibals. Uh, it was all right. It wasn't great, though, uh, especially because you have Slaughterhouse right next door to it, uh, which is a much more effective and creative version of that theme, I guess, but not quite the same. did my main Millennium Force review in yesterday's vlog, however I did get another ride on it yeah, towards the back and I reiterate everything that I said in yesterday's vlog as I pretty much covered everything that I need to say. I did go on to Rougarou, however, which is right next door to it, 
and it packed the exact same punch as I remember it. Nothing really to say other than uh, it wasn't a floorless to begin with, it was a stand-up coaster, so those rapid changes in directions, the snap turns that used to impress me as a stand-up coaster, not quite as effective as a floorless, floorless unfortunately, because I guess your center of gravity is a little bit lower. all this beautiful this for other videos in the future but that is not here nor there it's time to wrap up our day here I've covered everything like I said if you're planning on coming to Cedar Point I don't think you should come in the middle of the summer if you're planning on getting on everything strongly consider coming to one of these haunts earlier in the haunt season I know it gets crazier closer to Halloween but at this time of year it's probably the best I've ever been to this park as far as like from a manageable perspective getting on rides. It's been remarkable. Three and a half hours, all the major attractions done. And now we're off. Well, except for one or two. Uh, as I'm going to skip Gatekeeper today as I did rate it last night. And I don't rate it highly, unfortunately. I'm not a big fan of that coaster. It just sort of... You just kind of experience it, but it's not a memorable experience for that matter. I am going to go on a final coaster that is a memorable experience, and one of the first ones that I ever rode at this park. So let's get to that now, before we end our day. suspended coasters out there. It's relentless. I honestly, I having been on Montu recently, I may contradict myself and loop back and give you a review based on that experience. I've been on so many other inverts now, like Great Beer. Um, so it's just gotten to the point now where I do need to compare and contrast. This legendary ride that brought me to the park in the first place with what out there, what's out there now. We still have the Cedar Point Memorial here of all rides, Wild Mouse of which is actually going to be resurrected next year. Trabant never got on it, unfortunately. Also never got on Whitewater Landing, even though I was here in time to get on it. Of course have Wicked Twister, the most recent deceased attraction. Star Voyager in the background. This is a fascinating little... They even have one of the original cars from the Wildcat that I rode here way back in the day. 
thing. There is the tombstone for it. The sky wheel, space spiral in the background, pirate ride, and finally the fun house. to this design or the perfection of this design eh, maybe not quite maybe the third best as far as I'm concerned in the world but still an incredible ride no trims on that mid course it just bangs in through every element and I'd say the back is better than the front even though you do get that view uh, as far as the forces I like extreme forces and you're gonna get that on Raptor in the back we're headed out of the park now it is only two in the afternoon and we're headed out of the park and you might be thinking, well that's madness. Why would you spend the peak hours of the day in a relatively empty park heading back onto the highway? Well that is because I'm going to another Cedar Fair park and very excited to check out what I think is the best haunt in North America still. But for now, it's a wrap from Cedar Point. Overall impressions, what an incredible stay. I can't think of a better experience to offset my last trip here where I didn't even make it inside the park and turned around on the causeway. That video is on the channel in case you're curious to watch it. I'll probably put a little thing up there just in case uh, it's hard to find. But yes, incredible day. I love this park. It's full of enthusiasts. It really is the mecca for enthusiasts. Anytime that you come here, you kind of feel like you're in church in a way because you're with people that kind of know your vibe. And won't, yeah, I don't know. This is the park that treats you the best when they know what it is that you love. It's coasters. And I've been coming here almost 30 years now and I can't wait for another 30 more. We'll see. a wrap here from Cedar Point for 2022. Thanks for watching guys. It's been a tremendous, if that is even a word, tremendous day. Can't wait to come back next year. And that we will.